G'day folks, Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. Warren Wearsby had, uh, during the course of his lifetime, he lived uh, 1929 to 2019, written somewhere, I think, north of 150 books and or booklets. Was the pastor of Moody Church at one point in time, the uh, host of the Back to the Bible broadcast on radio that was quite popular for a number of years. Um, he put together, I think he was the editor, he would be called, of the 50 People Every Christian Should Know uh, collection. That's a single book, that really wonderful down through uh, church history. Uh, 50 folks that every Christian should know about. One of my uh, very favorites of Warren Wearsby's books was called On Being a Servant of God. Really talks uh, there in that book about the heart of those who are involved in ministry and what it means to be a, a, a servant leader. And uh, it has been a book I have gone back to time and time again just for the tone of it. And anyway, Warren Wearsby uh, has also put together a collection of reflections on the Psalms. And um, one of his publishers published this sometime before he passed away. It's called Prayers, Pray, Prayer, Praise, and Promises. And I'd like to read uh, his, uh, he's got a few different days. This is, this is spread out and you know stretched out over a year. But I'd like to read Psalm 37 and then what he has to say about Psalm 37. I'll just read the first seven verses here of Psalm 37. These are um, just a, a, a powerful Psalm of King David. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither like green plants they will soon die away. And you can, you can almost see that. I mean, the, the ancient songwriter here, uh, uh, you know, David, whether he wrote this strumming his harp while he was watching over sheep as a shepherd boy, or whether he wrote it while he was the monarch, the king, the great King David, I'm not sure. But um, what I am sure of is that he was a poet and thought poetically, and he speaks in ways that you can kind of see all of this. Don't fret yourself because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong, you know, because they're, they seem to always be getting ahead. They always seem to be winning and advancing and becoming well, all that stuff. Don't fret because of their success. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. And wisdom uh, flows throughout the book of Psalms. And of course, here we have some wisdom that gives us a perspective on life. Um, and it's so easy for us to get into comparison thinking with different people. Oh, I wish I had that person's success. Oh, I wish I had that person's opportunities, that person's car, that person's talent. Um, some people think I wish I had that person's family or their wife or whatever it might be. And here he says, don't fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. Like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. And he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn. The justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil, for evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. And that's just really the first uh, uh, eight or nine verses there of Psalm 37. There are a bunch more, and I encourage you to go read the entire psalm if you're intrigued by some of what I've just read there. Let's Hear from the sage, the pastor, the author, Warren Wearsby.
and uh, just see what he has to say here. He's focusing in on verses five through seven. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. That's verse five. Bring what to pass, Warren Wiersbe asks, and I love the way he used to ask questions and got to hear him once talking to 500 pastors and answering their questions that uh, were all being submitted. They were all, I think they were written out and sent in on three by five cards, but uh, you, can e- you, you can even go online, I think, and you can hear this. If you just search Warren Wearsby and uh, Pastors Conference or something like that, he's just, he was just so loving and wise and brilliant. Um, Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Verse five. That's of Psalm 37. Bring what to pass, asks Warren Wearsby. Well, God will bring to pass the thing that does you the most good and that brings him the most glory. This is a good verse to memorize, he says. No doubt there is something in your life you would like God to do. You've been thinking about it, dreaming about it, praying about it. If God is going to accomplish things for us and in us and through us, we must follow certain instructions. And we have those instructions right here in Psalm 37. So listen to these three things that Warren Wearsby highlights from Psalm 37. First, we must commit our way to the Lord. This is a definite act of our will. We don't commit it to the Lord and then take it back any more than a farmer plants his seed and then keeps digging it up to see if it's growing. Committing our way to the Lord is an act of the will, an act of faith. We make our way his way, and we make his way our way. That's worth saying again, don't you think? We make our way, his way, and we make his way our way. That's so good. Committing our way to the Lord is an act of the will and an act of faith. And secondly, not only must commit our way to the Lord, but secondly, we must trust God. So it's commit your way to the Lord, trust also on him, and he will bring it to pass. So second point, we must trust God. What does it mean to trust God? It means to believe his promises and to know that he is such a wonderful God that he always can be trusted. We trust people because of their good character or performance. God's character is perfect and his record is perfect. And that's so true. I I know when I encounter various trials and tribulations myself or when I'm praying for others who are encountering something and they've just all of a sudden they're facing a giant in their life like King David did when he was uh, a a little shepherd boy. That giant seems completely, um, you know, beyond David's ability to even think about winning the victory over And yet David, when he was facing the giant, uh, as he ran to the battle, he he shouted, the battle is the Lord's. And that's exactly what we have to do too, is, is trust the Lord, commit our way to the Lord and trust the Lord. God's character is perfect and his record is perfect. Good to remind ourselves of that record. God has been faithful to you. God has been faithful to me. And so the next giant I face, the next storm I go through, the next difficulty, I need to remind myself, I need to stir myself up by way of reminder of God's character and God's faithfulness. So the first thing is we must commit our way to the Lord, Warren Wiersbe says. Second, we must trust God. And third, he says here, We must wait on the Lord. And again, he's expounding really from that verse five, isn't he? Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he, the Lord, shall bring it to pass. Okay, so we wait on the Lord. 
When will he act? I don't know how many times I've asked that question. Warren Wiersbe is so generous hearted as a pastor and, and so honest himself that with each of these, he's asked a question, hasn't he? You know, and here he's asking, when will God act? And I don't know about you, but I don't always find that God is operating on my timetable the way that I want him to. He's either too slow or too fast. But as I look in the rearview mirror over my six decades on the planet, I don't find God's too fast or too slow. I find that God's always right on time. Um, he knows so much more than we do, doesn't he? Third, we must wait on the Lord. When will he act? When he wants to. This is why David adds, and this is from verse seven, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Martin Luther translated this, quote, be silent to God and let him hold thee. Wiersbe says, and this is his pastor at heart speaking, he says, I like that. Just rest in the Lord. Wait for him. He's working in you and on you while he's working for you. Commit, trust, and wait and he will bring it to pass. Mm. I gotta read that last couple of sentences one more time for myself, if not for you. Martin Luther translated it this way, be silent to God and let him hold thee. And Wearsby says, I like that. Just rest in the Lord, wait for him. He's working in you and on you while he's working for you. Commit, trust, and wait, and he will bring it to pass. In each of the day's readings, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube anyway, at the very bottom uh, down here, you'll see there's a bracketed section, and um, he's got a, each time he's got a, a little closing comment or a question. And uh, that's what makes Prayer, Praise, and Promises by Warren Wiersbe um, uh, even better than what we just read. These are great questions. What would you like to see God do in your life? Start by aligning your will with His. Commit your way to Him. Trust Him and wait on Him. God is working for you in His time. He will accomplish His work. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you for the wisdom of uh, Warren Wiersbe, our older brother, now home with you. I'm so grateful uh, for this sage perspective on uh, a, sort of an eternal perspective, uh, even though he wrote this while he was still with us. Um, Grateful to you, Lord, for Psalm 37, for David and all the stuff that he went through and the way that he kept turning to you and was a man after your own heart. And you showed yourself faithful. Even when David was a sinner, even when he turned his back on you, you continued in pursuit of him. Lord, do that for us. Uh, show yourself faithful, Lord. Show yourself faithful. Uh, to be gracious and kind to each and every person within the sound of my voice right now. I haven't a clue what they're going through. I know uh, just a little of what I'm going through, and I certainly have uh, knowledge of uh, some of those I love dearly who are going through a great deal, and I pray for them, and I pray, Lord, that you will be our refuge and strength. You will be their fortress, and Lord, you will prove yourself faithful to them, and pour your glory through our lives. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good one. This podcast is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. Don't forget to also subscribe to one of our other podcasts, Curate's Corner with Kim Thomas. Every Friday throughout the season of Lent, join Kim as she looks at the story of Jesus' last week as told through classic art 
prayers, and scriptures. You can subscribe to her podcast on all major platforms, including the Village Chapel YouTube channel, and you can find accompanying resources at lent.thevillagechapel.com. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas, music by Phil Kagey.